What's up Amazon sellers? If you are starting out on Amazon and you are wondering what reverse sourcing is, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna talk you through and show you live on screen what reverse sourcing is step by step. This is the video that's gonna help you out in your Amazon journey. So stay tuned. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson. And quite simply, I'm an Amazon arbitrage seller buying low from local retail stores, selling online on Amazon, making money. Now, I am on a mission right now to do one million pounds over the next 18 months. And I'll drop a link up there to a video that I'm doing for that explains it, basically breaks it down, profits, everything that I'm looking to do. Maybe it can help you in your journey. Check that out. But enough of me, let's talk about what we're gonna do in this video today. Okay, first things first, before before I kind of jump into it, let's just go through, if you are just starting out on Amazon and never done any sourcing at all, there is a sourcing technique that you need to understand. It's about how to check what you need to do, how to understand if a deal is actually a deal. I really recommend you watch a video and I'll put it up here. It's called Getting Started on Amazon, Manual Sourcing. Now quite simply, all of the types of sourcing that we talk about in Amazon, they all rely on that one fundamental process, manual sourcing, which is checking the products, making sure they're the right deals, and you're gonna to need to understand that. So if you've never done any sourcing at all in your life, check that video out. That is the one that you wanna know. Once you do that, come back, watch this video. Now on this video, we're gonna do manual sourcing, and that's the reverse sourcing part of it, and we're gonna do it live on this video. So first of all, let me talk you through what I'm gonna talk about, and then second of all, we can actually jump into it and actually go through the live sourcing. So what are we going through today? Number one, I'm going to be talking about what is reverse sourcing. Number two, I'm going to talk about why you should be doing reverse sourcing, why it's so great. Number three, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of reverse sourcing. Number four, I'm going to talk about what to look for when doing reverse sourcing. Number five, I'm going to talk about how to do reverse sourcing and we'll be live on the screen to show you step by step how to actually do it and a top tool that you're going to want, which is free, it really speeds up the process. And then finally, number six, I'm going to share some top tips with you to how to become an expert at this manual sourcing process, reverse sourcing. So number one, what is reverse sourcing? Well, quite simply, it's a variation of manual sourcing. Normally, manual sourcing would go, you go to a supplier website, what you do is you look at the products they're selling, you find the same product on Amazon, you check them, and then you see if you can buy it from the supplier, sell it at the on Amazon for a profit. That is the process you're going through normally in manual sourcing. Now, quite simply, with reverse sourcing, you do that process in reverse. You start on Amazon, find a product that you want to sell that meets all your criteria, and then you go back and find a supplier. Now you can't always find a supplier, but that is fundamentally what you're doing. You're finding the products you want to sell first and seeing if you can find a supplier. Where normally in manual sourcing, you're finding products that you can buy and seeing if you want to sell them. That's it. Okay, number two, why should you do reverse sourcing? Well, quite simply, it's quick. It's quite an easy method to do. And because you are finding the products you want to sell first and then having to find the supplier, if you can find the supplier at the right price, you're pretty much there. A lot of the time with these kind of sourcing, this sourcing methodology, you're gonna find suppliers who are out of stock. That's fine. You make a note of them and come back and check them. Because you've already found the product you want to buy and the product you want to sell, it can speed up your process. That is why you wanna do it because it can make it a lot easier for you to find products to sell on Amazon for a profit. What I will say is stay to the end of this video and show you how to do reverse sourcing live on my screen. It's gonna help you out and a one top tool that's gonna to speed up the process. Okay, so number three, what are some pros and cons to reverse sourcing? Well, let's just first of all talk about the pros. Number one, it can be quite a cheap way to find products that actually sell on Amazon because hey, you've already found the product on Amazon that you want to sell, now it's just about finding the source or finding a supplier for that product. So quite easy to do that. Also as well, it helps you find products that you want to sell on Amazon, quite simply because you can see what the metrics are, you can see everything working that's really going to help you out you know what you're trying to find and that leads me quite nicely onto the other point in the fact that you're not worrying about is this product going to be worthwhile for me now your only question is this I know the products I want to sell where can I buy it from that's it and if you make a nice long list of Amazon products you are then only worrying about finding the supplier you're not worrying about anything else oh 
at the right price, of course. What are some of the cons? Well, quite simply, it's still a manual sourcing process, so it is still labor intensive. Don't think of this as a silver bullet, you're gonna find lots of deals, you're not, it just doesn't happen. Number two, because it's a manual process, it's quite time consuming. You know, not only is it a lot of copy and paste, a lot of moving around, it's actually quite time consuming, it eats up a lot of time. Now, also as well, this process, if you're doing it in certain categories, let's talk about toys and games, and maybe you're doing this process as a variation, looking at other sellers doing reverse sourcing of what they're selling, you are naturally going to find products with higher competition because you're probably going to find suppliers that everyone else is buying from and everyone else is selling on. And as a result, the products you are going to buy and resell will have more competition. If you're all right with that, that's fine, but it doesn't mean as good as profitability. So if you can find products which don't have lots of competition, win, 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 but the nature of doing this can lead to more competition. Just be aware of that. Okay, so number four, what kind of things do you want to be thinking about looking for in a reverse sourcing product that you are, you are trying to find? Number one, you're going to kind of jump into a category or a brand that you want to sell. If I were to say, for example, you were gated in toys and games, it would be very silly to start reverse sourcing a toys and games product. So you want to find products you can actually sell. Now, if you're not gated in toys and games, jump into toys and games right now. It's Christmas, toys and games is going to be a good thing. Number two, what you're probably going to want to do is look for products that actually sell. How do we understand that? Well, we look at the sales rank. Anything closer to one on the sales rank of that category is going to be a higher seller. So the lower the sales rank, the more likely it's going to sell volumes. That is what we want. The other one we kind of think about just when we're doing a, an initial glance is quite simply, the majority of the time when Amazon is on the listing, it means it's probably not going to be as profitable and we're probably not going to get a share of the buy box. Or if we are, it won't be as much as we'd like. But simply, what do a lot of sellers do? They'll purposely skip listings with Amazon on them. Even if they might look great for everything else, if Amazon's on the listing, they're just gonna skip it. So a lot of people will skip Amazon on the listing and we'll show you how to do that in the live demonstration. Now, once you've narrowed it down to category, it sells well and there's no Amazon on the listing, you wanna actually go into the product and you want to understand, first of all, can I sell the product? Eligibility to sell. If you can't sell the product, no point in reverse sourcing. Number two is can I, can I ship the product? If you you, like me, you're doing the Amazon FBA program, then I would really recommend checking for Hazmat and there's some great tools that do that as well. Now, once I've checked for Hazmat and eligibility to sell, another thing that I'll probably look at is just how much competition there is. I'll have a look at either the Keeper chart or actually go into the number of sellers. I'm really just trying to find out if I were to buy this product, do I think I'm going to get a share, a good share of the sales or am I not? So I can have a really quick glance at the number of sellers and the competition that I'm likely to face. And then finally, the final check that I'm actually going to do is profitability and ROI. Because once I know everything else is fine, if it makes me a profit, I'm pretty happy. And that is a really easy way to analyze a reverse sourcing deal in that order. Okay, one thing which I will say is you're probably listening to me now about doing reverse sourcing, finding leads, and I'll talk to you some pros and cons. Quite simply, I'm not going to lie, sourcing for deals takes time. It's labor intensive and it's time consuming. Now, one thing which I will share with you is I run a service called Fast Track FBA, the name of this channel. And quite simply, what do we do? We provide online Amazon leads, arbitrage leads leads whereby you can buy low, sell high on Amazon for a profit. We do that both in the UK and the USA. We're slightly different to everyone else in the fact that you can pick and choose the leads that you want. So if you want high profit, super fast selling items, low competition, you can find that. You can get high profit maybe and slower sellers, that you know, maybe slightly bigger items that are gonna match your inventory age or you want certain types of categories, you can pick and choose those leads. We show you all the information. We show you the 90 day price, and the profits off that and the current price, number of sellers, everything. You can literally go in, have a look at all our deals. It doesn't cost you anything. And then when you're ready, you can buy each deal that you want, exchange them for tokens. You basically buy tokens from us, exchange tokens for deals and unlock them. And then you can buy the products and sell them on Amazon. Now, if you are interested, be sure to have a look down below. That's Fast Track FBA. And I'll drop a link down below to our lead service. I think you'll really like it. We're getting a lot of really positive feedback and we're always improving it. So check out Fast Track FBA leads. Right, okay, so crunch time now. This is the time that I'm gonna go live and share with you the reverse sourcing technique. So let's jump on the computer and I'll go through it now. So this is number five, going live on the reverse, reverse, reverse sourcing technique. 
Okay, first thing first, before you start doing this technique, what I'd recommend you do is you install a Chrome extension. And the reason is I will show you in my screen share what the Chrome extension does. And it's quite simply called Amazon DS Quick View. I think it's that, Amazon DS Quick View. That's right. And if I just show you here, what you can see is now I'll load it up. So quite simply, what does this do? This on the over or the search page within Amazon search results is going to show you number one, the sales rank, the ASIN, but more importantly, what we are after is how many FBA sellers there are and if Amazon's on the listing. Remember, as part of that search criteria that we look for, we're looking at the category we want, we're looking at the sales volume, but also as well, we're looking to see if Amazon are on the listing and because they are, we're not going to reverse source it. So without even having to go into the listing, we can just look at the overview. Amazon DS Quick View is going to help you understand that. And you know what? This Chrome extension is free. Great. So get that Chrome extension installed. It's just going to pop up in your top right hand window and load up every time you're on an Amazon search page. So let's jump now over to Amazon and go through the reverse sourcing technique. I'm right here. I'm currently in Amazon and I've set my, uh, if you want to know right now, I'm in the UK. So I've just set my delivery address into Amazon. Um, and what I'm going to do is remember what we're doing. We are searching for a product in a category or a product or a brand that we are interested in that we know we can sell and then maybe in a category that we want to sell. And then we're going to go find the supplier. So first of all, we're going to find the product we want to sell and then we're going to find the supplier. So I won't lie, I've done this already. So I kind of know what I'm going to be doing and we'll see and just to show you guys. But obviously sometimes it's not going to be this quick. So let's jump in right now. Let's say, for example, I'm going to type in C's. Now, quite simply is C's candy in America is, is a great, uh, as you say, candy supplier or manufacturer. And maybe we want to reverse source them because we know we've sold some in the past. Maybe we've had some good products. So now I want to find some more products from C's candy that I can sell. So quite simply, we've got a couple of products down here. And the one thing which I'm going to say straight away is you're going to notice here it's got these sponsored links. I generally tend to avoid sponsored links. The reason is, is um, the first result you're going to see, say for example, this one here isn't sponsored. That's going to be the best selling seeds product you search for, i.e. sales rank, because it's ranked highest in the search results. And as a result, it means it sells the most. Now remember, we're talking category. Then we're talking about understanding, looking at, is it the product that we want to sell? And if Amazon's on the listing and also the sales rank. And because that's ranked higher, that's what we want. Now the thing about sponsored products is generally speaking, they're not as well selling. They don't have as high a volume. And what someone's doing is paying to promote them up. So I'll usually skip sponsored products and I'll jump over to the first result where there is no sponsorship. So if we have a look over here, this, this product right here, what I can see it's C's candies, one pound dark chocolates. And what I can also see is down here, it's got, this is the add-in for Amazon DS Quick View. And quite simply, it shows me the sales rank, so it's 4,469, it's showing the ASIN, and it's showing this lovely little box here, nine plus FBA sellers. That is telling me there are nine FBA sellers on here. Now, quite simply, that is what I'm looking at. I'd like to see a couple of FBA sellers to give me confidence that it's not an IP restricted or IP brand problem, but I'm looking there to see are there sellers. Now, one thing I'd probably look at is if I can scroll down, can I see an example? Uh, here we go. You can see here, this product here has got sold by Amazon. So if I see the sold by Amazon, I'm not interested in that because Amazon on the listing and I want to avoid it. I'm looking for listings where there's no Amazon. So let's get back to that product. Now, quite simply here, what I'm going to do is we can go into that product straight away. But what I might do is I might just literally right mouse click search. I'm going to search Google for that product. Now straight away, what you can see, sees candies come up and I'm just going to check that. Let's go check that out, not a problem. Load it up. And remember it's a one pound chocolate. And I think it kind of looks like this one. It's saying there's two sizes. We'll have a look at that. Um, what I can see here, we've got dark chocolates and we've got one pound and we've got two pound. So I can see the one pound selected and I can see here, it looks pretty much the same. But the one thing I can see it is sold out. But if I look at that price, £23.50, and I come back here, I can go, look, it's going for £42.99. So quite simply, I can see that it was on sale at £23.50 on the Sears website, and then now it's on sale for £42.99 on obviously Amazon.com. Let's just say, for example, that was still on sale. What might we do in the next one? And hey, we might even do that analysis now and store that product 
in um, on a sheet so that we'll keep checking it for when it comes back in stock. And that's gonna be really important. Obviously just loaded up the product now. Now quite simply, remember what's the checks that we've done before going into the product. Number one, we've gone to a brand or a category, toys and games or C's as a, as a brand that we wanna search. Number two, we're doing for sales. Remember, we're gonna skip the sponsored products and we're gonna to go to the, the top ones which aren't sponsored because they are the best selling items in our search results. And then number three, we're gonna skip Amazon on the listing. So wherever there's Amazon on DS Quickview, we're gonna skip that one and move on to the ones where they're not. And I'd probably just add, we are looking for ones where there are a couple of FBA sellers. Why? Because it's probably most likely that if there are no FBA sellers, there might be a problem. But hopefully you are looking for a brand that you've already sold or maybe a category that you've already sold and you know that there's not going to be any IP problems and that's going to help you out. What I've done is I've come in and this product here and we've had a quick look and I've seen, if I kind of have a quick look, it's a very similar style products. One pound dark chocolates, that is one pound, 23 pound 50, I would say, Pretty much the same. I haven't done too much analysis on these, so take it just that they are the same, but obviously they are in our stock. But if we're doing the rest of the analysis, let's go through it now. Okay, so first things first is when I come into the listing, remember we are looking at two things, eligibility and hazmat. So first of all, eligibility is no, FBM Auto Tool is telling me that, but I did click the, actually the ungate button and they successfully ungated me. So that's automatic ungating, that is brilliant. I was really happy there. But also thought I can see hazmat is saying no hazmat, it means I can ship it. So just got ungated, hashtag excited. Number two, also as well, I can sell this product, so that's great. Now, the third one I look at is number of sellers competition. Well, I know top of my head is doing 2000 units. I can probably just quickly jump in here and do sales data and have a look and I go, oh my God, these first couple of sellers have got 2, 1, 1, 16, 1, 1, 1. They are really low stocked. If I scroll down to Keeper, I can see right now, there's about 20 sellers on the listing. I can also see that Keeper I love to use also around here, saying new 16 sellers on this listing. So not much competition for something doing 2000 units a month. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the competition has very low stocks. And then finally, what's the final check that I'm gonna do? I'm gonna check for profits. I'm gonna put my purchase price in and put my profits. So buy price 23.99, if I check that. 23.50, sorry, 23.50. Let's drop that in. You're looking. Six, $6.66, $28.30. So, all right, profit there, not brilliant, but it's all right. And you might say, actually, just the volume of it might actually make it worthwhile for you. So, quite simply, we have found a supplier, we found a product on Amazon, and then we've reverse sourced that back to the supplier, and then we've gone through those checks in that order to speed up that process. And you might notice that I've done the profit last because I can do all the other checks within a few seconds of just scrolling the profit means I have to then come in and start typing stuff, which slows me down. So click, 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 click. Once you're happy with everything, then put in your calculations to see if it's actually a profitable product for you. That is reverse sorting. Okay, so question for you might be number six. What is some top tips that I can do for reverse sourcing? Well, quite simply, we've found a product that we want to sell and then we want to find the supplier. That example right there and then, I found a supplier which was out of stock and I could have gone looking for more suppliers, definitely, but I'd already found a supplier which sold the product at the price I wanted it, but they're out of stock. Two things, record that link, record supplier, record ASIN, Number, and keep checking it. Number two, you could quite simply email a supplier, hey, when are you gonna get it back in stock? I'm interested in buying. Now that's a top tip for you, build a sheet of products which are gonna help you find those matches that you just wanna replenish, keep actioning when they come available. Number two, you can add a variation to this. Instead of looking at just going into Amazon searching for a supplier, a lot of people, what they do is they look at what other people are selling and then they add, once they've found that product other people are selling and they like it, they'll then go and find the supplier. So that's another variation you can do. So question for you, you guys, what is your sourcing strategy? Drop it in the comments down below. I'm really interested to see, do you use this sourcing strategy and do you have a variation on it or do you prefer another one? Let me know in the comments down below. What I will say is that's pretty much everything for me. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Just tell me you like the video. Hey, hit that subscribe button so you're gonna get more videos like this. And hey, if you are looking for leads and maybe you don't have the time, do check out Fast Track FBA Leads. Have a look down, I'll drop a link there. I think you'll really like it. But what I will do is I will leave you a video around here about top ways to do Amazon online arbitrage. But for me, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.